All right, all right, all right. Guru here. Charlie just went on point. She's sniffing around back in there. Might be a, a grouse, maybe. Don't know. What do you got, Charlie? Might, 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 maybe. Don't quite know. I thought I heard one yapping. Go on, girl. No. Well, I tell you, bird hunting has been as tough this year as fishing because of the lack of water. So, little update to yesterday. Uh, floated the Kilchis. Even though it was low, I had put in up at Kilchis Park. And, um, come on, guys. Charlie. We just came through here. There's nothing here. Put in, come on, Charlie. Good girl. Put in up at the park. Um, it was actually, they had the road closed because there was some issues in the last high water. And the guys did a real nice job fixing it all up. Looks beautiful. Um, looks like they got a little more work to do, but um, you can put in there. But um, uh, hooked that one broomtail Chinook, hammered a spinner right off the bat. Charlie, come. And, you know, Day was looking great, not counting the 50 million chums that were in the river and some bright ones. Of course, I caught a few chums, but uh, I did manage to hook a silver. Come on, Charlie. For just a minute, came and whacked one of my spinners, actually in a hole. I wish I could post that picture. Exact same hole I got one in last year. A nice buck. Um... But hooked it, came up and hammered it just for a minute. And there was three or four other silvers that were coming with it, which was kind of cool. Um, come on, dogs. But, uh, you know, ended up seeing one more Chinook. Um, hooked it briefly on eggs. Just, I think it was maybe it just been sniffing my eggs. But, um, you know... With things in Tillamook the way they are, uh, you know, you can only keep hatchery Chinook. And those are mostly on the Wilson or Trask. I did talk to one older gentleman that I know. Um, they did get one on the Kilchis, so I know at least one was caught there. And he's a pretty reliable source, so it's not like, you know, I'm... It's I just heard it. This This came from a reliable source. They killed him Tuesday on the kill just absolutely demolished him um he said they were i don't know i think had 11 or 12 chinooks um and one of them was hatchery but they were all chrome bright but everything i seen was dark but i will say this i've never seen that many chum in the kill just in my life and that's saying a lot also i've never seen that many boats um, like I said, I had the whole upper river to myself. Nobody put in up river. It was low, but I was alone in my boat. So it wasn't so bad. I only scraped in a few areas. So, and not like heavy, you know, had to get out and walk the boat a couple times, but no big deal. But, uh, man, when I got down to the logger bridge, there was so many people down there. I mean, literally every corner and I'm not joking, every turnout had at least two boats um i've never seen it like that before in my life on the kilchis normally that river is dead you know there's not a lot of people there mostly because there's bigger numbers people concentrate on the trask and the wilson so once i got down i basically just said screw it and beat feet all the way down to the takeout from the logger bridge i stopped in one spot and fished briefly um there was a pod of brand new fish moving up which was kind of cool 
where I was. I actually watched them. Basically, I'm almost to the takeout, the reach of Tidewater. And it was pretty cool. I was watching this big pod of fish move through. And that's where I stopped and fished for about a half hour and didn't hook nothing. But it, I mean, I don't know. There was probably 100 to 200 fresh you know, uh, look like chum to me, but there could have been schnooks. There could have been some silvers in there. It's tough to say, but man, there was a lot of people. And then I beat feet over to the Wilson just to see what was going on there. Charlie, I can't see you. There she is. Beat feet over to the Wilson. It was bring your own rock on the Wilson. I mean... I've never seen anything like it. There were so many people there. Um, same thing with uh, on the Trask. I just ran over and checked out the 101 just to see how many people were at the boat ramp. Um, it was ridiculous. There was, I mean, there were so many people. I mean, just insane amount of people. So on the way home... Um, I went and checked out the Nastucca too. Not so bad. There was four or five trailers, but it was, you know, after three o'clock, a lot of people probably went down. What you got there? But, uh, you know, even in the morning when I was passing by at first light at Farmer's Creek on the Nastucca, um, there wasn't that many people. But... After that high water, I didn't go up and look at the boat ramp up there by Beaver to see, you know, how many people were up there. But I imagine it was pretty busy. But um, the Nesteca didn't look like it had too many people at all. And I'm pretty sure on the Nesteca, too, you can still keep wild schnooks. But I'm not totally sure. I thought it was all the Tillamook area streams. Could have, But it could be just it was Tillamook Bay. I got to reread that, and I would suggest that you read that too to make absolutely sure. I don't want to point anybody in the wrong direction. So, because always consult your regulations, always look at the updates on the Oregon Department of Failure and Waste website. Um, so, you know, you know what the rules are because, you know, if they're having a bad day, they'll change the rules on us. Most likely just because they're assholes and. You know how I feel about the Oregon Department of Failure of Waste. I'm not going to waste any more time on those fucking pieces of shit. But anyways, um, yeah, it was busy to say the least. And I think that's going to be the, probably the theme for this year is how busy it is. Um, you know, you're just, you're, you're going to have to outsmart the people. And like I said, if you can fish weekdays, um, do it. It helps. Um, I can't even begin to tell you how much it helps to fish weekdays. And, you know, there's just less people because there's so many people on the rivers during the, the weekends now. I mean, it's just crazy. Or, you know, travel a little bit. You know, there's lots of rivers further south that you can go fish. Um, like the Silettes, like the Alsi, you know, try to get away from people. Um, you know, of course, everything close to the Portland Metro or Tillamook or the coast, you know, it's going to get hammered. That's just the way that it is. Charlie, come. Jesse Bear. Charlie, come. I see you. You ain't on nothing. You're sniffing around the dirt there. Come on, dogs. Good girl. Good girl. They're really, really doing well today. Staying tight, not getting too far away. You know, keeping that 20 yard mark. No, we're going this way. Come. Come on. Come on, Charlie. Come, Charlie. That's kind of what I want her to do is just go back in there. There could be grouse, you know, just in there 20, 30 yards. And if they fly the right way, I can get a shot at them. But yeah, I'm not. Let me switch hands here. Well, good news. 
Uh, I've had a couple people, one particular person says I need to change the way I film. So I'm going to do that. Um, my wife is probably going to buy me a GoPro <laughs> for Christmas so I can, so I can make all this look a whole lot better and give you guys a more realistic experience. You know, that's what I'm trying to do. I'm trying to make it to where, you know, you folks out there watching this, you know, you're not, you're not looking at me. Um, I want to make it as if you were here with me is realistic as if it's your eyes you know, looking through the woods and so far what I've seen with the GoPro, it's kind of what you want to use. Plus, uh, uh, one of my subscribers mentioned that it would be better not to film it on my phone because the iPhone does just such a wonderful job, but to film it to where you could full screen it. And most of you, if you're like me, you know, you watch everything on your TV. Um, so I watch YouTube on my TV and um, you know, it is nice to have a full screen. So I hear what you guys are saying. I appreciate that feedback. I really, really like it. Um, uh, next weekend, um, I didn't do it this weekend because it just didn't work out yesterday. I was really trying to get into some fish. Um, I'm running low on fish. I know the guru is running low. I think I have like half a springer left and that's it man um albert he's over in idaho right now on the clear water chasing fish um you know some of them big b runs uh god he sent me a bunch of pictures yesterday of three or four real nice fish um nothing super huge yet looks like i think the biggest one they got's about 12 pounds um, if that's something you want to do, that Idaho fishery on the clear water, it sure is a beautiful, beautiful place to fish. Very, um, very picturesque, very nice, especially that stretch up there by Orofino on the clear water. And if you're not familiar with that, there's a lot of good guides you can hire for the area. That's what they do, um, is they get a guide and, um, most of the time and go fishing with them. They'll kind of, you know, for those who can afford it, because guides aren't cheap, and you want to take the learning curve out of whatever fishing, you know, salmon, steelhead, sturgeon, whatever, smallmouth, um, walleyes too, um, you know, uh, hire a guide. That's the best way, even if you hire a guide twice, and you're a guy who's got his own boat, and you know how to fish, and you know, that guide will teach you more than you can imagine, um, you know, and really take the learning curve out of what you're doing. Uh, they, they can eliminate a lot of the problems that you may encounter. They can also, um, you know, really point you in the right direction. Um, you know, it's generally not a good idea to fish where guides fish, you know, especially where you're with them, but at least you can get on a stretch of river, you know, there's fish. And the other thing, if you are someone who's fishing, you know, same stretch of water as the guides, you know, uh, give them a little break. Remember, they're trying to make a living too. Um, they're just doing it at what we love and, you know, um, Certainly don't low hold them because if you treat guides, you know, the way you want to be treated, they won't low hold you. Um, now that being said, I can't tell you how many guides in the Tillamook area, um, specifically and the Nestucca will low hold the shit out of you. I'm not going to name names, but you know, if you see the guide sticker on the boat and they decide to low hole you. And what I mean by low holing is you're fishing a particular hole, they float by you and then they throw in the tail out. Um, you know, that's low holing and that's douchebaggery. Um, there are quite a few guides that say, because they have clients, it's okay to low hole, you know, that's bullshit. I can tell you of two guides that have never done that to me. Only two. First one is big Dave manners. Um, that guy, man, 
I've been seeing him for years on the water and not one time has he ever low hold me. Not once. Um, the other guide I will mention in the Tillamook area is Dan Dieter. Um, that guy's never, not, <laughs> not one time has he ever low hold me. And those are really, and Terry Mulkey is another one who is very respectful to the people that uh, are fishing on the bank and or other boaters. So those three guys, uh, Big Dave, Dan Dieter, Terry Mulkey, um, those are the guys if you want to get to know the Tillamook area that I would recommend going with. Um, all three of them live down there so and are from there. And all three of them have probably the best, you know, uh, dictionary of knowledge for that area and just general knowledge on how to fish. And uh, you can't go wrong if you hire them. So, but outside of that, like I was getting, uh, saying it's, it's just, there's more and more people in Oregon and you know, you, you're just going to have to find better places to fish, more remote places to fish. But a lot of guys are doing that too. And we're all going to have to share the water, but anyways, not a lot of action was going on. Uh, you know, if you were able, the best reports I got were from, um, Monday and Tuesday. Um, the guys who were able to fish Monday and Tuesday when the rivers all dropped into shape. Perfect. Um, of course they slaughtered them and that's it, man. They were, they were able to take weekdays off and, you know, unfortunately a lot of us can't, so we got to fish the weekends. But they're still, you know, don't be discouraged by that. Charlie, I can't see you. There you are. Good girl. Don't be discouraged by that. You can definitely, um, you know, still pick up fish. Steelheading's just right around the corner. Of course, as everybody knows, day after Thanksgiving is the steelhead opener. I can give you a report that there has been steelhead caught in the Wilson and the Trask for sure. Anytime you have large pods of salmon, you know, especially where they're spawning in their reds, you'll have one or two steelhead hanging out behind those fish, um, specifically on the Wilson and on the Trask. They will hang out there and they will definitely be picking up eggs that are coming off the reds or eggs that the Charlie come on eggs that the uh the hens are pooping out so you know doesn't hurt to go with a single egg pattern for sure I had one on my drift rod and was was fishing behind those chums seeing if I could pick some up you know um it's happened to us before. The last one I seen actually was on the Miami River. That's a small little river that dumps in over by... Come on, Charlie. <whistles> dumps in over by Garibaldi. There's only a handful of places to fish it. Um, mainly up by the bridge there, that first bridge you come to. Um, the farmer's nice enough to let you go down there and fish. And But... Um, uh, my buddy George, he's he got one. We were in the lower end. There's some public ground um, that's on the lower end from the highway that the city of Garibaldi owns. Um, so basically, you can park at the bridge and walk up and or park at the bridge and walk down. There's a couple trails, but it's pretty cool. Um, and you can get into some seriously fresh. Charlie, come. Seriously fresh fish in there. And there's a few Chinooks that are in the the, um, the Miami, but not like, I mean, not hatchery ones. The only ones I know they clip are usually on the Wilson and the Trask. But come on, guys. Come on, Charlie. Jesse Bear. But, uh, hey, fall is here. Waters are finally come up 
you know, there's some steelhead already being caught. Um, you know, and, and try to plan accordingly. You know that there's more people in our state than there ever has been. And more and more people are fishing. And it's just madness in the Tillamook area. But the Tillamook area is not the only area to really get into good fishing. There's lots of other areas. Those areas are to the south. And, uh, you know, definitely I'm going to do a lot more fishing to the south. The other thing I want to bring up is the price of gas. Um, you know, also other costs. Uh, you know, it's it's 10 bucks a day now to use any of the, the Tillamook County boat ramps, parks, or whatever. You can buy a season pass for 55 bucks. So if you're someone who fishes a lot down there, it's advantageous for you to buy a season pass. And I would definitely do that. I do that myself. Because um, I'm definitely down there more than five times. So, you know, but it's expensive. Shuttle cost has also gone up. Most of the shuttle services down there, um, you know, it's... 25 to 35 bucks. I used Jim's shuttle service yesterday. It cost me $30 um, to have him shuttle my truck from Kilchis County Park down to the 101 takeout. Um, you know, everything has gone up. So that's another thing you can look at is cost. Definitely. Um, dogs, I can't see you. Charlie, Jasper, um, of course, gas, but, um, you know, you can maybe go to places in the South where you don't have to pay a lot of those costs. Um, and the shuttle services, I think those are all going to go up no matter where you go because of fuel. Um, so because of the fuel they have to use to shuttle their rigs, but, uh, you know, Charlie, no. Get out of there. Leave it. Good girl. But, uh, you know, if you can maybe go stay the weekend, like, say, down, uh, you know, down on the Umqua or down on the Alsi or, you know, just someplace, an, a good river to the south, um, you know, Spend the weekend, don't have to fight the crowds, that type of deal. You actually probably save a bunch of money rather than driving from the Portland Metro all the way to Tillamook and back again. You know, maybe two days in a row. So, food for thought. Think about your costs um, versus, you know, how much reward you're going to get. Because um, a lot of times... You know, those southern rivers, they don't get hammered near as much. That's why I'm doing more fish in the south, or fishing in the south. Um, the coquille is my new new bread and butter. Now, that's pretty far south. <laughs> it's almost to the California border, but, um, you know, I think it's worth it. Don't have near the crowds and lots of fish. In fact, the limit's three. So, three hatchery fish, and they put in lots of them. Um, you know, not going to see the big monster teeners, but, uh, you know, you definitely see lots of fish. Come on, dogs. Jasper, Charlie. Come on. Good dogs. Look at my beautiful pups. Look at my beautiful pups. Almost nine months old. Almost nine months. It'd be nine months on the 15th. Oh, guys. Nine months. Well, Charlie was born on the 17th of February. Jassy, Jasper, Jassy Bear. He was born on the 15th. So, they're only two days apart. So, we just say the 15th. But, um, getting back to the, to the coquille, uh, it's magic. Um, there's lots of places to stay down there. 
You can stay in Myrtle Point if you want to. It's strictly up to you. Or we stay in Bandon. It's not that far away. It's just a short drive to get up to the river from Bandon. And Bandon is such a beautiful town. And everyone is so nice. Um, it's like the Oregon I grew up in down there. Because in the Portland metro area, um, you know, the people that live here now, they weren't born and raised Oregonians. You have to remember, we've put 3 million people in this state in the last 20 years. And these people have done nothing but come here and try to change our ways. And, you know, a lot of them want to take our hunting. They want to take our fishing. And uh, that's just the unfortunate truth about it. So us as hunters and fishermen, we need to unite. We need to organize. We need to keep them from doing that. Charlie, come. Good girl. Who's your good girl? Good girl. No, you get over here. You're getting too far away. No, I'm going to stay right here until you come to me. Charlie, come. Yeah, she, she doesn't want to come. She wants to keep going. That's just in her nature. Keep moving forward. Good girl. Good girl, Charlie. But uh, we as sportsmen and sportswomen, sports people, we need to protect that. And the best way you can do that is to protect it with your vote. And vote for the people that want to protect these woods, the rivers, everything. And, uh, you know, keep this thing, pay it forward. You know, the, uh, the Democrat douchebags of the state of Oregon, they think they're the only ones that want to protect these beautiful forests and the rivers and everything else. And that's just fucking not true. They are without a doubt, the most misinformed and ignorant and foolish and stubborn people I have ever met. Um, you know, and they want it all their way. But we ain't gonna let that happen. We're gonna protect these woods. We're gonna do what's necessary to protect the rivers and keep stuff clean for future generations to come. And uh, I'll gladly lay down my life to make sure that happens. No problem. Charlie, I can't see you. What are you doing, Charlie? <whistles> Charlie, come. No. no, I see you, you're too far away. Puppies. <laughs> Puppies and dog training. But this is how it starts. Look at that beautiful dog. Isn't he gorgeous? Ain't ya? Just turning into such a fine boy. Fine boy. With that being said, we're almost to our 30 minute mark. I'm trying to keep all these videos to 30 minutes or under. Just because I know time's precious to everyone. And, uh, you know, maybe further down the road, we might, I've done some longer ones, but we might go longer. Depends. Depends on how this thing keeps going. But, uh, where's my beautiful girl? Charlie, come here. Show everybody your beautiful face. Charlie, come. Where's she at? Oh, Charlie. Charlie, come. <laughs> There she is. Hey, just want to say thank you to all my subscribers. Thank you for your feedback. God bless. And uh, have a wonderful, wonderful week. Guru out.